Welcome back to the Genus Brewing Channel, guys. Today we are teaching you how to super deep clean and repassivate your stainless steel equipment. This is essential, especially if you ever plan on doing a CIP scaling up kind of a thing on bigger equipment, uh, but it also really helps out for breaking in new equipment as well. And we got a comment calling us out on our kettle being really grody. So a couple months ago, I finally got around to cleaning it and just now I'm able to get the footage together. So let's go see how it's done. Let's take a look, guys. All right, everybody, so we got the handy cam today in the back. I got, bam, right there, dirty kettle. Look at that, nasty stuff, mm-mm, no good. So we're gonna turn that kettle into what that kettle looks like right there, nice and clean. Stay tuned, and I'll show you how to do it. Step one, add a shit ton of PBW. As you saw, we just put in a whole bunch of PBW in our kettle. But Peter, what is PBW actually doing in that kettle anyway? So PBW, when it's mixed with water, hopefully hot water, that's how it works the best. It does a two-fold scrubbing action, basically. So what it is, is it's a buffered alkaline solution. That uh, high alkaline is going to eat up any organic materials that have built up over time. And it also has activated oxygen, the same stuff that's an OxyClean, basically, that gives you your scrubbing action. So it gets those bubbles deep clean in your, deep clean in your soot. The purpose of having PBW in there is to remove any kind of organic materials. A lot of that brown stuff, that's all organic, and uh, so that's what's going to actually do the cleaning part of that kettle. Then rinse out your kettles and lick it dry before you go to the next step. Now that I have my PBW wash and rinse done, I also cleaned some kegs while I was doing it, uh, we've got our kettle. And as you should be able to see, this thing is looking pretty nice now. So. You'd think at this point, we're done, right? No, we got one more step to do and this is actually gonna be the most important step. So let's fill this sucker up and I'll show you what it is. Always make sure your valves are closed. Got my kettle here, full now. And uh, the last step is going to be that stuff right there. Acid cleaner number five. So, that's an acid specifically designed for passivation of stainless steel. If you don't have that acid, you can actually just use star sand, but you're actually gonna use it at a strength about four times of what you would normally sanitize stuff with. So if you can get a hold of this stuff from your local homebrew store, it's going to be a great option for you. Um, I'm going to dose this at approximately one ounce per gallon. So for this big old kettle, I'm gonna do about two pint glasses worth. While this acid isn't exactly gonna eat through your skin and kill you or anything, it's never a bad idea to put some gloves on. But I'm gonna show you a little bit of what I got set up here. So I've always got my kettle and I've just got a little pump. So now I'm gonna recirculate this through the pump just to kind of help it do its thing. We're at a stage right now that I call blue drank. Except for you obviously don't want to drink it because it'll probably burn your throat. But lastly, I'm going to use the same little heating element that I did when I had my PBW. And I'm literally just going to take that, stick it down in the tank. And uh, we're going to turn her up to, this one reads in the Celsius, but uh, about 60 or so. That's going to get us up to about 160 degrees Fahrenheit, I think, somewhere in there. And uh, so while that recirculates, I'm basically gonna let that go for, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half. And what that's going to do is do what's called passivation. And uh, passivating is the process of micro etching the stainless steel. It's about all the farther I know, but what I do know is that after I passivate a kettle that's been cleaned thoroughly with PBW down to the bare stainless steel, 
tends to make that kettle really, really easy to clean. <laughs> so Logan was actually a little bit off the mark here on what passivation is. Uh, let's, after some homework, let's talk more accurately about what passivation actually does for your stainless. So stainless steel naturally has a lot of iron in it. Um, but it also has chromium in it. And what happens is when it's not passivated, some of those iron molecules are gonna come to the surface, they're sitting on the surface, and when those wanna oxidize, they wanna turn into rust. Prime time for rust, use. Passivation uses acid to actually remove those molecules and instead expose the chromium molecules, which are also very reactive, but when they react, they perform, they create a natural a better oxidized rust. Bit. Yeah, they create an, yeah. Uh, an unreactive oxidized layer compared to iron, which is, as we all know, is a very reactive oxidized layer. And that, turns out, is what makes it easier to clean and also more resistant to overall use. And makes it look shiny, so the people are like, ooh, your kettle's so shiny. I almost forgot one of the most important steps. After you run the acid through your kettle, you need to let it air dry. That's going to allow that oxidative layer to form and give you the protection that you're looking for. If you don't do this step, then the whole process will be for nothing. Guys, that's it. Do these things and your kettles will be cleaned. Also, other things to do, I would suggest liking this video. We need more subs. Sub Please subs. share it with your friends so that they can sub to this channel so that we can spend more time on it because we got 50 billion things going on here and we would love to spend more time on this channel. I was really hoping you're talking about sandwiches. Comment, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications if you if you if you want to. Thumbs up, sees. That's it. Drink a beer. Um, mostly because he's a, he's a complete idiot and just doesn't know anything in the world. At least that's what my wife tells me. <laughs> right? Shiny! Like a treasure from a drunk and pirate wreck. Scrub the deck and make it look. Oh yeah, that is a good question. And the answer is the answer is yes. Thanks for asking that. Now I'm shoot any more questions you have at us. We can hear through the comment section below. Let me know if you like it, otherwise I won't do any more.